Inflation is clearly very topical, and we think there's two elements to inflation. There's the cyclical element, which is around the economic recovery this year, and the supply chain constraints, which have been well publicised. Uh, and then commodity prices, you know, year-on-year -year base effect of oil being $20 last year and $60 this year. Um, so there is that cyclical element of inflation. There's also the structural element, which is the longer-term thinking around the cost of manufacturing. And so we see localisation of supply chains, bringing goods back onshore to manufacture. Uh, Decarbonisation, where the world is very focused on becoming carbon neutral and the cost of, or the capital intensity of doing that, achieving that ob objective. And then wage inflation. So we think wage inequality is a big, big issue in society. And we think the Fed Reserve, and even in Australia, we're very focused on getting full employment. So that's taking US unemployment from 6% down to 3.5%. And if that happens, then I think you do get full employment and wage inflation. You're not going to see structural inflation until you see wage inflation occur. So if we believe inflationary forces are building, which we do, there's really four things we're thinking about. And, and the first one is real assets. So if you have inflation, then real assets go up. Real assets are things you can touch. That's property, commodities, agriculture, and capital intensive industries. And what we're looking for with real assets are things that are really difficult to replicate and hopefully really difficult to disrupt. Um, so that's really the first category, how we'd think about um, investing in an inflationary era. The second one is really around valuation support, because if you have an inflationary outcome, theoretically bond yields will rise and as bond yields rise, the valuation attached to long duration assets will fall. A 100 base point rise in the long bond or the 10 year bond would see a, a stock on 40 times earnings fall by 30%. And that's quite material in the context of how we think about inflation over the next two to three years. The third one is then pricing power. Because if you have pricing power, you can pass on those cost of goods that w which are rising onto your consumers without actually impacting any engagement. So pricing power becomes really important in an inflationary environment. And the fourth one for us has, is, is gold and, and has actually always been gold. Um, we think gold will historically does really well in times of inflation, but gold actually has a dual purpose because in times of inherent volatility, gold acts really in a non-correlated manner. So we've always allocated a portion of the fund to gold. So um, inflationary outcome, real assets, valuation support, pricing power, and gold. And that's how we're thinking about the portfolio construction.